Yeah. So I just came off saying uh-huh. that the Astros rain and the AL is over. That's an overreaction, but the Baltimore Orioles are the top dog in the American league. That is not an overreaction. Fly ball onto the track at the wall. It's gone. Home run. Turns on a ball. Deep right field. And gone. What a game. What a moment. What is up, my friends? The regular season is upon us. Welcome to Flippin' Bats, presented by Original Penguin, the brand you wear for an original good time. It's here. Regular season's here. We're back to Monday episodes of Flippin' Bats, where we got power rankings. We got team of the week. We got overreaction Monday. Then we're going to talk about everything that's happened in baseball. Alex, it just feels right. This episode particularly just feels so much like we're back. To be able to put all this together and have this episode and talk about real regular season baseball just makes my heart happy. Right? I mean, it all everything just feels right in the world right now. Because you got baseball back. Obviously, we we got like a taste of it last week, but different. Now we have everybody here. We both got to go to opening days. And this was yeah. just, you guys, I, I gotta tell you, this was a very like cool, strange, awesome experience for me. Why going strange. Oh, going to opening yeah, yeah. day. This was the first time that I have gone as a fan. Yeah. To an opening day, especially a Dodgers opening day, since I was a kid with my dad. I used to go all the time because I worked Angels opening days for 10 years, yeah. which was insane. So it was just like such a trip sitting in the stands, just like watching everything go on. I also made a huge rookie mistake, you guys. Huge rookie fan mistake. Wait, okay? let me guess. <laughs> you went to a Dodgers game and thought you had enough time to get there on time. So you were late. I did. I did. You were late. Well, I got there I was in time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> nailed it. I gave myself thinking like, Oh, this is great. I'll give myself a couple hours to get there. We'll get in our seats. We'll see the opening celebration. <laughs> I no, it. you guys, I walked in the stadium just in time to see Shohei Otani's first at bat at Dodger stadium. Okay. So not too bad. But You missed all the opening to the fly Dude, I over sat in my car for an hour waiting yeah. to get up Vin Scully's Avenue to the parking lot. Like that was again, rookie mistake on my end, big rookie mistake, but it was fun. There was like a lot of memories. You want to know something else fun? I learned today. What? So actually yesterday, Easter, right? Did so Easter... We, we record. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know, today uh, we did Easter brunch at my parents' house and My parents are about to be first-time grandparents because two of my sisters are pregnant. So they're going through all of the baby photos and all of the baby books right now. My dad goes, oh, have I ever told you what your first word was? I was like, no. What what was my first word? He goes, well, you know, I was watching Dodgers and Mets game and I was really upset at a play. And I just said, shit, under my breath. And then all of a sudden, I hear little Alex behind me go, shit, shit. So my first word (laughs) shit because of a Dodgers play. Yeah. So it was fun. Oh, you can't see the photo up here, but in that tweet, there you go. There's baby Alex at my first Dodger game with my dad and they were playing. That's me. I was a Buddha baby. (laughs) I looked like a boy, you guys, until I was four. My mom said she just used to like slap a bow on my head. That is remarkable. And look at that. That was Dodgers Cardinals. And my first opening day that I went to this weekend was Dodgers Cardinals. So it was like such a cool Cool. full circle moment for me. How was your opening night? Well, Alex, I will Because you went the next day. I did. And what I would what I would like to conclude your opening day experience on is this is it is going to shock absolutely nobody that Alex was a little bit late to opening day. Curry time. It's your thing. Curry time. It is. Just so you all I, know. Sorry. She, it, curry time is I just I take a long late. time to do everything. <laughs> you know, I set my alarm like 30 minutes before I need to be. So I'm doing my best. Okay. So I do my best. As you know, Alex, I'm very, I'm a punctual person. Yep. So to How'd get to do? opening night, I knew like the first night game. I was like, okay, we're going to get there. Um, I, I want to leave on time. It's going to take a long time to get there. Uh. So what I didn't take into account is that 
it was on Good Friday. So I don't think everybody in the world is working on Good Friday. Are they? I think there's I a few know. people that don't work. Okay. Because I know the stock market's closed on Friday. I think people in oh, finance snap. are kind of off. Okay. So there was not as much traffic as I was expecting. Lucky. I think I planned two Lucky. hours to get there and it took That's an hour. That's what I planned. It took an hour. That's what I planned. I, I planned two hours. We did the same thing, but mine was opening day. I should have added an extra hour. Yeah. That was on me. Yeah. That well, bad was on me. Let's, uh, let's talk. Let's talk opening day. Yeah. Opening weekend. By the way, make sure you all are, are subscribed, following wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple, Spotify, wherever. Also follow us on TikTok so we can get to 100,000 followers. That's our goal. And we're getting really close. Uh, opening day. I have a thought. Okay. Well, interested Let's in your it. take here. I think, I think we're doing it wrong. I think... We're in we're in March Madness currently. We yeah. see how that goes, especially the first two the rounds. Madness. All day basketball. Yes. We need all day baseball. In fact, I'll go even one further. I was sitting there Wednesday night. No baseball was happening. No March Madness. It was the day before, like the, I think it was the Sweet Sixteen was supposed to start. And yeah. I'm thinking, what better? There's nothing on. Put a put a good baseball. We got four games of. We had Astros, Yankees. We had Phillies, Braves. There were some really Ooh. good series. Put one of those in prime time on national television night. and let that be the first thing. I like that. And then here's my okay. real here's my real thing. I didn't yeah. even mean that, but oh. I do. But this right. is what I really want to say. I don't mean it, but it would be cool. Opening day <laughs> needs baseball all day. Like, we're on the West Coast. There wasn't baseball starting until like one, two. I don't, I don't even, but it should be a game starts at nine Pacific. I'll go off Eastern time. A game okay. starts at Noon, one, two, three, four, like just all day long, you have baseball going. It just felt like, all right, it's opening day. Let's wake up and wait. Hurry up and wait. And there was just a lot of waiting around until games actually started. I just think we could do opening day a little better, make it an all day event, have games going at all times. And that's my thought. I'm just shocked. I think maybe because like I grew up on the West Coast and I worked on the West Coast with a lot of these opening days. So for for me, it always has started at like noon or one. But it's weird that that doesn't happen on the East Coast starting that early. So then we get it even earlier. Like were, it feel it feels like we're missing something. So here. there, like there that was should be happening. The one credit I will give is that there was there were two rainouts and yeah. they were supposed to be earlier starts. Ah, uh, okay. Brewers, Mets, and Braves, Phillies were rained out, and okay. I think one was supposed to start at ten Pacific. Okay. And the other maybe like noon or okay. around so there. We so just there have was. More. But just yeah, like yeah. have have all the East Coast teams play more one o'clock more. games, yes. have, you know, and just I don't know. Okay. I don't know. That was just my thought. I like that. Just Ben's thoughts. Scary place to be, but that was <laughs> my thought. <laughs> oh, I love it. But it's back, you guys. It's Monday, which means overreaction Monday mm -hmm. is back, baby. So I'm gonna give Ben a bunch of different statements, and he's gonna say if he thinks if it's an overreaction or not an overreaction, and then further explain. So we had a lot of great series this weekend, right? A lot of captivating series. Mm -hmm. But one of the biggest stories, oh man, I mean, this was a viral moment, came from the Brewers and Mets. So our first overreaction, Reese Hoskins' slide was dirty. You are absolutely right, Alex. This this was probably, if there's a, such thing as a viral moment yes. of the weekend, this was this it. This was it. Reese Hoskins going into second to break up a slide during the Mets. Uh, Mets Brewers, their opening day, because they got rained out. Yeah. Their opening day game slides into second base to break it up. And it does just that. Breaks up the double play. Jeff McNeil isn't able to get the throw off. Um, and he's furious. So if you're watching, you can see the replay on the wall right here behind us. Um, but here's what happened. Reese Hoskins barreling down to second base, slides just before the bag, goes a little bit past the base, slides mm -hmm. into the legs of Jeff McNeil, and Jeff McNeil basically stands right over him. I thought he was about to punch him. That's what it looked like. It did. Stands right over him. Yeah is pissed, like pointing down at him, so pissed off that Reese Hoskins slid into second in what he thought was a dirty slide. Here's what I think. Okay. Reese Hoskins' slide was dirty. That is an overreaction. This absolutely isn't a dirty slide. And to answer this, yeah. let, me, let me just explain to you all, one, the rule here, and two, what we're taught. Because in professional baseball, we would go over this all the time in spring training. And actually, I got into professional baseball like the first year that the rule changed. You were allowed to 
barrel roll when oh, they yeah. got. You were allowed to really do whatever you want to break up double plays and run into catchers, over, run them over at home plate. The year I got into pro ball is the year that changed. But we really had to focus a lot on the new rules, how to go about it, and how to still be able to break up double plays. Because this is baseball. Mm-hmm. Your, your goal when you're running to second there is still to get there and impede that def- defenseman, defenseman, defenseman. Try to stop the double defensive play. Defensive player yeah. from being able to turn a double play. So – if you're sliding to the left or the right, and really it always depends on what the fielder is doing. Mm-hmm. If he's stepping through the bag, now let's, uh, Jeff McNeil's a second baseman. So yeah. think with me here as if I'm talking a, a guy coming from second base. A second baseman's either going to get to the bag and step through, so towards the towards shortstop, towards third base, mm-hmm. and turn a double play. That way, you can step back, you can catch the ball in second base, step back, or you can use the base as a bit of protection mm-hmm. and step towards right field a little bit and try and turn it that way. That's what Jeff McNeil tried to do here. So Reese Hoskins comes sliding in, slides before he gets to the base. His legs go a little bit to the side of the base, and he at no point breaks contact with the bag. He holds onto the bag the whole time, does not slide past it. That's where you get in trouble. If you slide past the base, so if he didn't start sliding until you're at or past second base, That's a problem. And if you're sliding to the left or the right, all you need to be able to do is reach your hand out and be able to touch the base. If you are within distance of being able to grab second base, this is a fair slide. So by letter of the law, the literal rule, this slide is legal. But I do think that's a different conversation of is it dirty? And to that, I think this is absolutely not a dirty slide. This is part of the game of baseball. We got to get This is ridiculous. This is part of the game of baseball. It was a hard slide. It was a clean slide. This was absolutely doing his job here. But I don't know. This just turned out to be a lot more than I think anybody thought it was going to be because they, the bench is clear. Everybody starts coming out. Reese Hoskins is out there calling Jeff McNeil a crybaby, doing all this. Yeah, and I it, love it just that. became here, here that yeah. is. Jeff McNeil's yelling at him. Reese yep. Hoskins does the crybaby face. Mm-hmm. Jeff really doesn't. <laughs> Jeff does not know no. what to do here. Look, this is absolutely an overreaction. This is not dirty. And any of anybody that should know that, yeah. it's Jeff McNeil. And oh, you yeah. need to look no further than last year when Jeff McNeil slid way outside of the base to break up a double play. I believe we have a picture we can show you. Here yeah. it is right here. He's he's so far out of the base path. He, look, <laughs> and even I was defending this as yeah. legal because I felt like if he was turned to the side, there's a chance he could reach the bag. For So for Jeff McNeil to get so pissed off and say that was super dirty, he knows it's not. I guarantee no. you he looks back at that and says it was not dirty. And I think the reason he got so worked up is because in his career, he's been a fairly injury-prone player, and that is a situation in which he could he could get hurt. A guy, a guy was sliding into his it legs. Does. But if you but, look at the video closely, like – as soon as Reese's cross, his arm is crossing the base, you can see his elbow try to hold on to the back of the base to stop himself. To the like, front. It's not even like he's yeah, close the front. to no, 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 no. The moment he gets over it, you can tell yeah. he is trying to slow down. He sees the situation. Yep. He puts his elbow kind of on that, the front part of the base, yep. and then his hand, to, oops, sorry, move my desk, to try to stop and, and move. Yep. And so I, no, I... Reese Hoskins just became the Mets like nemesis. He got heavy. Oh, boos. he's been. Yeah. That's why like, this is that's, a, yeah. Because he was with the history. Phillies and they, yeah. there there's, is history. There's history there. He got yep. heavy. He always just gets heavy boos there. This it's because it was Reese Hoskins, which is why this became such a big deal facing the Mets. And then he homered the next day. Good uh, on which him. was like <clears throat> it was beautiful. Yep. I love that. That's that's how you shut up a crowd. Yep. They're gonna boo you. I got you. Okay, we're moving on to our next overreaction. Now, this one was hard to ro- to watch. Justin Steele's injury will ruin the Cubs' season. Uh, this is an overreaction. Okay. Justin Steele's injury will not ruin the Cubs' season because it's not as bad as I thought it looked in the moment. I thought he pulled his hamstring and for a pitcher, mm-hmm. that's going to be a bit. Uh, that's yeah. going to be some some time. He strained it. It's a pretty. It's a not grade a, one left hamstring strain. It's not a great. It's not a great thing. He didn't avoid injury, mm-hmm. but he's going to miss 
apparently about a month. Yeah. Which if if you couldn't withstand your best pitcher missing a month at any point in the season, That's bad. the odds of you making the playoffs weren't great to begin with. And I'm not saying, well, you can miss your best, your ace for a month and like you either should or should not be in. It's not, it can't change. That's not exactly what I'm saying, but I, I don't think this derails their season completely. Justin Steele was throwing great and they had a good chance to win that game against the Rangers on opening night there. And it was just unfortunate the way it all played out. He went to cover for, went to run up towards the first baseline to make a play and you, it just looked like it popped. It looked bad. And then he limps off the field, but he's going to miss. Could miss the month of April is what the ruling is there and, and what the word is. So uh, I, I, I'm impressed with this Cubs team. I actually thought they looked good yeah. against the Rangers. Obviously, tough series to go on the road with the crowd the way they were after winning the World Series. Yeah, they were doing the um, trophy, the ring ceremonies. Everything was like happening. the vibes crowd, are crazy yeah. at that opening. I thought they looked good. Yeah. I, th- I think um they ended up winning Sunday, so they didn't they didn't get swept. Justin Steele's gonna come back. So look, a month for a pitcher is what? Four four starts. Yeah, not too bad. We both have them as a wild card team as well. So it's like yeah. Good enough. You Cody Bellinger be back in that lineup. I thought Michael Bush. I, I thought Michael Bush was a good addition. I, Christopher Morell hitting lasers that first game of the year. Uh, I'm going to say this is an overreaction. Okay. The, the Cubs. Uh, the Cubs season is not ruined because Justin Steele is going to miss a few starts. Okay. Doesn't help. Hurts. Not ruined. Does not help, and it does yes. hurt, but it's not ruined. Yes. Yeah. Okay. On to our next overreaction. Little teaser, I feel very strongly about this next overreaction. And if you listen to our last show, you know why. Juan Soto makes the Yankees a World Series team. Juan Soto looks good uh, yeah. as a New York Yankee. In fact, he's rocking the high socks. I love it. He looks good. Ugh. But what I will say, Juan Soto makes the Yankees a World Series contender. That is not an overreaction. No. I, I really do believe that. And to be fair, Alex, yeah, you had them in the World Series. I had them getting to the World Series, and I have the I. I have think Juan we Soto. Both, I think we. I had Juan as Soto ALMVP. as MVP. Yeah, I obviously Alex did. I also I had them. I thought I thought better than most people were saying the Yankees were going to be. And there mm-hmm. is a we can talk depth with them, and can they withstand injuries? Well, they're already having to do that with Garrett Cole down. So I absolutely think. The addition of Juan Soto makes the Yankees a World Series contender. Their lineup, it's just different. Yeah. And you can say, like, well, one player in a nine-person lineup, it's just different. The Having Juan Soto and Aaron Judge back-to-back back in that lineup is honestly, yeah. it's unbelievable. And you start the, look at this stat. Most times on base, the first four games as a New York Yankee, you have Pat Collins at 12. You have Bob Watson at 12 in 1926 <laughs> and the uh, Pat Collins was in 1926, Bob yeah. Watson in 1980 and Juan Soto in 2024 with 12. Yeah. He tied those guys. It's pretty good. And he's had like really big moments, like game one, that game saving throw at yeah. home plate, uh, go ahead, hit, it to like complete the sweep. Like the, he's just, you can feel the energy is different with Juan Soto being yeah. with the Yankees. Everyone knows when you acquire Juan Soto, you're acquiring him for his defense. And that's what he showed in game one <laughs> of the series. And really, he really did save the, he did. the Yankees swept the Astros because of Juan Soto. That is definitely yeah. not an overreaction to say. And I already felt like the Yankees were world series contenders and mm-hmm. could possibly get there. I didn't have them getting there, but I did feel like, they're World Series contenders already, and yeah. they showed that in series. Look, four games. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, it's just four games. Let's not overreact. But we're talking on the road in Houston mm-hmm. against a team that is also a World Series contender and has been the best team in the American League for almost a decade. This is a this was a good, fun, fairly big series to start the year, and I thought the Yankees showed how good they are. Carlos Rodon needs to pitch well. Yeah, he did. Nestor Cortez on opening day pitched well. So you have Nestor, you have Carlos Rodon, you have Stroman. I always liked that rotation, not in that order. It's going to go Garrett Cole. I think Carlos Rodon needs to be the two and be good, and Stroman. And then if you get Nestor doing what he did opening day, he looked really good. This team is good, 
And it's time people start realizing that. People either are diehard Yankees fans and say, we're going to win the World Series, or you're not a Yankees fan and say, ah, they suck. They're not going to be very good. Bon Soto doesn't add enough. Stop it. Both of those things don't have to be true. It can be somewhere in the middle, middle, and right now it's more so that the Yankees could be a World Series team. They are really good. It's time everybody realizes that. Carlos Rodon's going to be a stud for them this year. He looked great. Juan Soto, my MVP pick, mm-hmm. looked great. This is not an overreaction. Juan Soto absolutely makes the Yankees a World Series contender. I agree with you. Okay, now let's talk about the team that they swept with our next overreaction. The Houston Astros reign in the American League, is over. Yeah, they didn't look good. They didn't look good at all. Um, And, uh, Ben, the Astros' last win at home was game one of the ALDS on October 7th. Yeah, I saw that. I thought people overblew that. The Astros do have a winning at home problem. But the the Astros have a win at home a lot sooner. Most teams don't play in the playoffs, so... I, but yes, mm-hmm. I get it. They played a lot of games mm-hmm. in that time at home and haven't won uh-huh. one, and they still haven't. And people are saying the Astros might go 0 and 81 at home this <laughs> year, and I can't discredit that. It <laughs> looks like that might happen. Uh. Was my math right? I think it was 0 and 81 at home. Is the Astros' reign in the AL over? Not is it? That's the overreaction question. I am going to say that that is an overreaction. Here's why. Okay. I. This is the first year where I've been a little, I feel like I'm always and have constantly been saying the Astros are inevitable. And I will still say that come playoff time this year because the Astros will be in the playoffs and they might be in the ALCS again. But this is the first year where I feel like that gap in the American League is a little bit different Mm -hmm. for the longest time. And this is still true until that changes. The Astros were the Yankees daddy in the playoffs. It's just true. Let's call a spade a spade here. The Yankees look like a little league team against the Astros in the playoffs. And until that changes, the Astros own the Yankees. And until the Baltimore Orioles prove that they can win in the playoffs, the Astros are still the Astros in the American League. But I do just feel like that that window is getting tighter and tighter. And the Yankees that we just saw sweep the Astros in Series 1 and the Orioles who look really good, I feel like those teams are now in contention to be to to take that reign away from the Astros, but I'm not yet ready to say that their reign is over. The Astros are going to be good. They're going to get in the playoffs. And until somebody beats that team in the playoffs early on or consistently, I know they didn't win the World Series and I know the Rangers beat them, but we're still looking at a team, although there are pitching issues right now, which is why they're struggling. Mm -hmm. Justin's not in the rotation. Framber didn't look great. The rotation is not in good place right now. But this team still has Jose Altuve, Mm -hmm. still has Jordan Alvarez, still has Kyle Tucker, still has Alex Bregman. And that's the core that has been there for a long time. And they're still there. So I am not ready to overreact and say that the Astros reign is over. I will say it is an overreaction to say their reign is over. So, but they didn't look good. And they have pitching issues that they need to get figured out. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I got for you. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Leads right into our final overreaction here, Mm -hmm. you guys. The Baltimore Orioles are now the top dog in the American League. Yeah, so I just came off saying Uh that the Astros' reign in the AL is over. That's an overreaction. But the Baltimore Orioles are the top dog in the American League. That is not an overreaction. Mm -hmm. And let me explain how both of these can be true at once. The Orioles look fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my World Series pick in the American League to get there, not to win, was the Baltimore Orioles. And that doesn't shift at all for me after the first couple games. They look really good. Corbin Burns, fantastic. Gave up one hit. It was a homer to Mike Trout because, of course, it's Mike Trout. Grayson Rodriguez looked fantastic. But the ace that the Orioles needed was Corbin Burns. It changes the entire feel of this team. Yeah. They've already offensively, we we saw it last year. This team's just different. This Orioles team is ready to compete and be really good for the next decade. It's the same blueprint the Astros had, and this just feels like the window has just creaked open if Mm -hmm. you're the Orioles. So you really feel like you're in a really good place. And I do feel like the Orioles are the top dogs in the American League. But they got to prove it. They got to prove it 
in the playoffs now. Like I can sit here right now and say after last year being the number one seed in the American League and losing in the first round of the playoffs and now seeing them at the start of this year after their addition of Corbin Burns and saying, I think the Baltimore Orioles are the top dogs in the American League. But I'm not ready yet to say the Astros' reign is over until the Orioles beat the Astros in the playoffs. And this could be the year. And I am on record saying I think this will be the year. Yeah. But that's how both of these things are true at once. And we're not going to, th- these two questions aren't going to be answered until October. You know, like the Astros' reign can't be considered over on March 31st or on April 1st. That's a preposterous thing to say. But the Orioles, to me, look like the top dog in the American League. I'm going to stick with that. So Baltimore Orioles are the top dogs in the American League. That is not an overreaction. Yeah, the Orioles look pretty, pretty good. And I have a feeling they're going to be pretty high up on the list in our next segment because it is time for our week one power rankings. Now, we did a week zero, but now that we have some games from everybody under our belt, we're getting a little bit of movement, starting with number 10, who is making their debut in your power rankings this year, the Brewers. These graphics look great this season. I know. This is great. Upgrade. Also, we got two Larry David Curb Your Enthusiasm references in our in <laughs> one show today. Really, really good. Uh, all right. We're starting with the Brewers. Hand up. I missed this one, at yep. least so far. I was really, really down on the Brewers to start the year. And honestly... Uh, Churio in the outfield, Reese Hoskins adds some like swagger to this team mm-hmm. over at first base. Uh, Christian Yelich has looked really good to start the year. Brewers have looked good. Freddie Peralta is going to be Freddie Peralta is a great ace. Uh, I worry about, I worry about that rotation. I don't think the rotation is going to be very good behind Freddie Peralta, but the bullpen is nasty. So a lot of the elements you need to be a good team, at least so far this year have looked really good. So, um, I don't know. They, I, I've, I'm impressed with mm-hmm. the Brewers. They swept the Mets to start the year, have looked good. Maybe I missed it. We'll see. Time will tell, uh, but a good start for them. Time will tell on our next one, too. At number nine, down three spots after getting swept at home, the Astros. Got to move them down. Yeah. Got to move them down. Not a, <laughs> a nightmare start. The yeah. worst start you could ask for if you're the Houston Astros. You, you got a big series, mm-hmm. and again, I don't care if it's the first series of the year. You get a little more up because to start the year, you got a four-game set at home against the New York Yankees and their new addition, Juan Soto, on the team. We're going we're gonna to show them. Yeah. We're going to show them what's up. Well, they didn't, and it was really bad. They're on 4 had to move them down. I do believe the Astros will be fine. I do believe they'll be a playoff team. Let's not overreact to a, mm-hmm. a one series to start the year, but – that it was not a good start for them. So I moved them down. What'd you say? Three down three down three spots yeah. to number nine at number eight. Also an AL West team up one, the Mariners. Yeah. The Mariners aren't really up one because they looked fantastic. They're up one because the Astros went behind them and yes. they got pushed up a bit. I I'm high on the Mariners this year. Uh, they didn't have a great start to the year against the Red Sox two and two um, pitching will be good. Pitching will be great this year. I think they'll be fine. They just, they, they, they didn't really sway me in one direction or the other. They just moved ahead of the Astros. So they're up one to number eight. All right. At number seven, up one, the D-backs. D-backs looked really good, man. That first, first game of the year, uh, their offense, their offense looks really, really good. And I think we could look up at the end of the year and their rotation could be a top three to top five rotation in the game of baseball. So the Diamondbacks are three and one. They look really good. They're coming off an NL championship. Their team is raking. They're a lot of fun. So, yeah, I moved the Diamondbacks up one. They are uh, three and one on the year at number seven. Can I ask, is it normal to do, like, NL champion rings? Because I yeah. saw that they got oh, yeah. rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you I thought it. it was just World Series. No. Like, when you, you win it all. It's also considered a, a championship, by the yeah. way. Yeah, okay. NL championship, no, I, pennant winner. That's fair. You get a ring for that. Okay. Absolutely. Well, Speaking of winners, the reigning World Series champs down one at number six, the Rangers. Yeah, Rangers are two and one. Mm-hmm. Good start to the year, I thought. They didn't get moved down for anything that they did wrong. Mm-hmm. I, I honestly thought the Rangers looked good. 
Uh, I thought I, I really like that they just really threw Wyatt Langford right in the middle of it. They'll hit him third in the lineup. They'll hit him fifth in the lineup. <laughs> Corey Seager is is healthy and and playing to start the year, which I didn't. I, I think people were kind of on the fence if he was going to start the year mm-hmm. uh, with the team. He is. It's a really good offensive team. Pitching rotation question marks remain, uh, but two and one down one because of what's to come. Okay, moving on to our top five. At number five, Ben, you have them down two spots, but they're still remaining in the top five, the Phillies. Look, a one and two start to the year, but it was against the Atlanta Braves. So I am very high on the Phillies this year. I have them as my World Series champion this Mm -hmm. year. They started the year at number three for me, moved them down just a little bit. It's, again, not the end of the world. You lose a series to the Braves. You salvage the series on Sunday. You didn't get swept. uh, So not the end of the world. Completely fine. I think the Phillies are going to be really good. Not the best start to the world, but it's not like I'm going to move them out of the top five just yet. So, uh, yes, down two. At number four, mentioned him off the top of the segment. They're staying strong, the Orioles. Yeah, Baltimore Orioles, high on the Orioles. By the way, last two teams is my World Series matchup. Yeah. You got the Orioles right here. You got the Phillies right behind them now at five. Orioles started the year looking great. Corbin Burns, fantastic. The addition they needed. Looked really good, punched out a bunch of guys, only gave up one hit, only gave up one run, which was that homer to Mike Trout. And Grayson Rodriguez, man, I was the reason, honestly, the reason isn't necessarily Corbin Burns that I like the Orioles so much this year. It's that I really like Grayson Rodriguez. I think they, I think we could look up at the end of the year and these could be co-ace kind of guys. Ooh. That's how good I think Grayson Rodriguez is going to be. Continued what Hot he did take. in the second half of last year. I think he could be in that Cy Young conversation this year. The guy has everything he could want. It was just about having that success in the big leagues, which he got. And he got that confidence at the end of last year. And now he's going to care. He had so much hype for a reason. And now we're seeing that he had a really good debut this year for the Orioles. So they did lose on Sunday to the angels again, not moving them one way or another angels. Orioles are two and one here at number four. Okay. Number three, most movement we've seen in the power rankings yet. The Yankees up four spots after an impressive sweep of the Astros. Yeah. Look, I think people are going to be, I think this could, could get a little flack maybe that, that, that I moved the Yankees up this much after one series. But again, I was high on them to start the year and I'm even higher on them right now. They mm-hmm. looked really good. So they're four and oh, uh, I, I got them in the three spot. Like you yeah. said, Alex, because Juan Soto and Aaron judge back to back in that lineup is really fun. The lineup is deeper than I think I imagined right now, at least with Oswaldo Cabrera doing what he's doing. Um, and the rotation, the Yankees for me, we're a playoff team. Even with the news of Garrett Cole, I had the Yankees in the playoffs because I thought Carlos Rodon was going to be back to being Carlos Rodon. And I saw it at the end of the, at the end of spring training, I needed to see some things from him. Do I care about stats in spring? No, but I needed to see Carlos Rodon throwing mid to upper nineties again. And I needed to see his slider moving again. And I got that. I saw that. So it looked like he was, and and towards the end, Mm -hmm. honestly, the beginning was a little shaky. Yeah. So I think Carlos Rodon is in for a big year. Stroman is a great middle of the rotation piece for them. Nestor looked good on opening day. A lot of swing and miss stuff. So man, the Yankees look really good Uh without the best pitcher in baseball right now. Garrett Cole, four and O start in Houston against the Astros, the team that's been to seven straight ALCSs as big of a series as you can get to start the year. And they went in and blew their doors off. I got them moving way up to number Mm -hmm. three. I agree. Okay. Number two, one and two stay in the same at number two, the Dodgers. You do you agree out? You don't think I should move the Yankees up above your beloved Dodgers just yet? Not yet. Uh, Okay. Not yet. So the Dodgers are uh, three and two again, as many of you all know, uh, we record this on Sunday evening, always during the Sunday night game. So the Dodgers are currently playing against the Cardinals, currently losing four to three in the seventh or eighth inning around there. Uh, even, win or lose, Dodgers aren't moving for me right now. The top of that lineup is so unbelievably good. MVPs everywhere you look. The team is fun. Bobby Miller looks like an ace of a staff kind of guy. Yamamoto, by the way, the haters. Everyone that loved to say, ha ha, you paid 300 plus million for Yoshinobu Yamamoto and he looks awful in his debut. Bye-bye. Come on. Bye-bye. Just what a bunch of haters out there. And as we're speaking, the Dodgers take the lead, by the way. So are they going to be four and two? Are they going to be three and two? It doesn't matter for me. They're not going up to one. They're not going down to three. Bobby Miller looks great. Yamamoto looks great. Sound, silencing the haters out there. Oh yeah, I, uh, love I really like this team. They're going to be really good. 
Dodgers at number two. And number one, your Num- Atlanta Braves. Number one's the Braves. Yeah. Uh, looked fantastic to start the year. Obviously losing Sunday, uh, salvaging that win for the Phillies. But uh, yeah, the lineup is just so deep. Everybody on that lineup looks, <laughs> Matt Olson. Matt Olson looks awesome. I, I've been so impressed by Matt Olson the last couple of years as a lefty to be able to do what he's done. I saw some really, really good at bats from him uh, on Friday and Saturday to be able to hit some lefty lefty to go to the opposite field, hit a couple doubles down the left field line. The guy's locked in. He has completely changed. In my opinion, Matt Olson is no longer just a power hitter. I don't, he's not going to flirt with 300 this year, but he is not a guy that's going to hit 230 with 50 and, and lead the league in homers. Like he's a guy that's, going to be able to get on base and he Michael Harris the second just lengthens that lineup they're so good from top to bottom rotation is so good as well Uh, bullpen can hold their own so the Atlanta Braves did enough to stay here at number one so they round out my top 10 first week of the the regular season so we got Brewers in here for the first time this year Astros moving down three to number nine then we go Mariners Diamondbacks Rangers Phillies Orioles Yankees Dodgers and the Atlanta Braves to round out the top 10 for this week. It is now time for our first team of the week yeah, it is. of the season. And what an epic opening weekend it was. Obviously, we've been raving all about it, all show. So let's get started with... You know what I think we should do? What? It was the first one of the year. I I'm, I think we picked up some new avid fans of the show in the off season. Ooh. Let's really explain what team of the week is for the first time of the year. That's fair. Right? Fair. Yeah. Team of the week, as Alex just said, we're going to go around position by position. And it's from Sunday to Saturday every week, picking Good the best explain. player from each position from the week that was now. When it's the last episode of the month, Mm -hmm. we do team of the month. Now, obviously, this would there's been a couple games, so we're not going to call this team of the month. But team of the week, position by position, best player from the week at every single spot on the field. Love it. How'd I do? Good. A little redundant, but Eh. pretty I got it. I mean, you're a repeater. I got the point across. I got the point across. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you're a repeater. Yeah. 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 (laughs) You're a repeater. Got it. Now we're both repeating. Let's get to it and start with the man. Behind the plate, your catcher, Kiebert Ruiz. Yeah, he looked really good. This is Kiebert Ruiz. We're talking about a big-time prospect with the Dodgers Mm -hmm. that really hadn't, I don't don't even want to say hadn't lived up to the hype because he's still really young. Uh, Last year was his first year really getting full playing time and was okay. Uh, But, man, he's killing it to start the year. Uh, 571 on the week, hit a homer a thousand slugging percentage. And I, I watched the, um, he had a really big home run against the reds on Saturday, just an absolute mammoth Homer guys got pop switch hitter behind the plate plays good defense. Uh, so yeah, he's my catcher. He looked really good. We could be in store for the breakout season of keeper Ruiz. All right, let's move up to first base. Freddie Freeman. We might also be in store for the breakout season of Freddie Freeman, <laughs> who appears to be a pretty good baseball player. Hit 417, hit a homer, four RBIs. The top of this Dodgers lineup is pretty, oh, pretty insane. good. It is unbelievable. Freddie's off to a hot start. Uh, yeah, 417. He's my first baseman. All right, moving to second base, Cattell Marte. Yeah, I've always, I've always liked Cattell Marte, and. That, man, the D-backs came out swinging in the first game of the year. Put yeah. 14 runs in, in one inning. Yeah. They scored. Pretty good. Or, yeah, 12 on 14 hits or 14 on 12. I, I don't know. Math. They put up a lot of runs in one inning. Cattell Marte was a big part of that. He had 462, scored five runs, stole a base. This is why I, I've, I might, my opinion honestly might be a little skewed because he's one of my favorite players in MLB, the show to use. So I, I think I Wait. really like gravitate towards those players in real life. Yeah. I really do like him a lot. The dude, I love the dude's that. a stud um, and he's starting off the year great. Does well for me, you know, in my video games. So I want to have him like do really well in real life. Is that what I sound like, Alex? No. Really? I'm changing my voice really? so it's not my voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move to third base. Oswaldo Cabrera. Yeah, this has been huge for the Yankees. Oswaldo Cabrera is my third baseman. Played a good bit of third base this week, but really played all over. Played shortstop on Sunday. Can play in the outfield. All I know is his bat plays. He had 538, two homers, six RBIs, a 1.615 OPS. 
Woo! for Oswaldo Cabrera. It just lengthens that Yankees lineup so much. We're going to talk so much this year about the top of the Yankees lineup and how good or poor or whatever it may be at the time, Judge and Soto are doing back-to-back. But for Oswaldo Cabrera to do what he's been doing, and I know it's still early, but it lengthens the Yankees lineup so, so much, having him hit down at the bottom of the lineup and rake. And uh, he definitely did that this week. You know who else we're going to be talking a lot about? This is another man who you can put anywhere, and he is going to be incredible. But at shortstop, Mookie Betts. Yeah, Mookie uh, had himself a week. 556, three homers, a 2.381 OPS. That is what you call having a good week. Uh-huh. And I believe, I know he homered in the last game of the, the Soul Series. So technically, if four homers in four straight games, that's, yes. that's the stats just aren't counting for this. But talk about a heater. The guy's got an OPS of 2.381 on the week. So uh, pretty good week there. So that rounds out my infield. Okay, now we're moving to the outfield. And this is just top three outfielders, not necessarily by position. So let's get started with Lourdes Gurriel Jr. Yeah, the guy looks unbelievable to start the season. He has been so good. 462, three homers, and eight RBIs. I actually think this was an underrated pickup, and I say pickup because he he was gone. I know he was on the D-backs last year, but we're, we can talk about the addition of Jock Peterson and how much he adds to that lineup, being a big lefty with good pop, who, by the way, Really good start to his year as well. We can talk about the addition of a Eugenio Suarez over at third base. We can talk about the addition of Eduardo Rodriguez uh, in that rotation and Jordan Montgomery. But Lourdes Scurriel signing back with the Diamondbacks is huge for them. And he had a great first week. So he's my first of three outfielders. All right, your second of the three outfielders. Michael Harris the second. Love me some Michael Harris the second. Just on flipping bats uh-huh. like a week a week or two ago, somewhere in that time frame. And I just I really believe this guy is gonna have a massive year. He hit he hit around 290 last year after having one of the worst first couple of months out of any hitter in baseball. The fact that he turned his season around so much and not only put up respectable numbers, put up good numbers mm-hmm. on the season after the start he got off to. You'd be dumb to not think Michael Harris II is about to have a massive breakout year. I think he could be an all-star this year. I think the sky is the limit for Michael Harris II. Starting off the year hot, 667, a 700 on base percentage, an OPS over 1,800. Guy looks good. Huge for the Braves out there. It's really fun to see him up from, you know, this is I talked about this with him. He's been in the nine spot for last year in his, in his career, hitting right in front of Ronald Acuna. So, if you get on first base, you want Ronald to hit. You're, yeah. you're not going to run as much. So I think we're going to see some more stolen bases out of him this year. Uh, so he's my second of three outfielders. What are you laughing about? I, <laughs> you'd be dumb to think <laughs> he can't do this. I yep. just, I laughed. That was yep. aggressive. Dumb, dumb. Dumb, dumb. Okay, let's move to your final of the three outfielders, Luis Robert Jr. <sighs> it Luis Robert Jr. is a damn good baseball player. And it's starting to me to feel like we might have, we might have a Mike Trout situation on our hands here. A really, really, really good baseball player. That's really sad that that's the same. And I I can't say that to the extreme. I'm not Mm. saying Luis Robert Mm. is Mike Trout. Mike Trout is an all-time great. We can't yet say that about Luis Robert. But it would not surprise me if Luis Robert Jr. wins an MVP award at some point. But he's not talked about because he plays for the Chicago White Sox. Mm. And it's frustrating. And he's a really, really good baseball player. He had two homers uh, opening weekend, 500 batting average, and OPS over 1,800. He's so good. If you don't want to watch White Sox games, just do it to watch Luis Robert Jr. play. He really is incredible. He rounds out my outfield. So it's Lourdes Gurriel Jr., Michael Harris the second, and Luis Robert Jr. Oh, they're all juniors or seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Fun fact. Okay, let's move to <laughs> Very your, fun. Very yeah. fun. Your DH of the week, Nick Martini. Nick Martini of my Cincinnati Reds, Woo! baby. Shaken or stirred, Nick Martini's <laughs> killing it. Hit 600, two homers, uh, seven RBIs, an OPS of, oh, get this, 2.600. A 2,600 OPS. Hit two homers in one game 
on opening day and then followed that up on Saturday with pinch hitting, didn't even start the game, came in and hit a huge triple, a massive at bat for the Reds. The Reds are such a fun team. They play with swagger. They're really good. And Nick Martini is a, a difference maker on the team. He really is. It was so much fun to watch. He was great. Two bombs, by the way, as well. So he's my DH. All right. Now to your starting pitcher of the week who had a career start for the Dodgers. You were there the mm -hmm. night that he pitched. Bobby Miller. Watched it up close and personal. Ooh, and I texted uh, you. You didn't text me back. Is that true? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Is that true? That doesn't uh -huh. sound like me. I'll pull up the receipts. That doesn't sound like me. Uh, that is exactly you. I might be a little late. You never respond to text messages. <laughs> uh, Calling people well, out. Well, I was sitting in the stands, uh, was there with Elizabeth, my girlfriend, and was literally, I wouldn't say she's the biggest, most knowledgeable baseball fan in the world, and I just kept saying, man, Bobby Miller is dealing. Yeah. Bobby Miller is out there shoving. She's like, what does this all mean? Yeah. I was like, well... You, well, you look up at the end of the game, and the guy punched out 11 guys through six innings, <laughs> got to win a whip of 0 0.50 on the mound. He was just dominating. I was looking up at the scoreboard like every pitch and say 99, 100, 100, 99. The guy was just throwing fuel out there, blowing balls past guys, looked fantastic. Um, this is what – this is the hype. For Bobby Miller. There has been a lot of hype. I've been high on him since he got to the big leagues. And honestly, he's shown that he's going to be a good pitcher, mm -hmm. but it just feels like this year is going to be different. And start number one was, a, was a pretty good start to that. He was fantastic. And it was really fun to watch that in person. All right. And now your closer of the week, Clay Holmes. Yeah. Clay Holmes. Look, he ended up with two saves. Didn't give up a run, didn't walk anybody, only gave up three hits. But, man, I am not sold on Clay Holmes being the Yankees' closer. Whoa. It's it's okay. sort of a roller coaster. It really is a bit of a roller coaster. Back when I used to, I back when I used to watch every single Tigers game growing up, Todd Jones was the, was the closer, and his nickname used to be Roller Coaster because it was always an experience when he got on the mound, and yeah. it was going to go up and it was going to go down, and hopefully it ended on an up. And he honestly, for a year, for a couple of years there, it was always ended on an up. He was really yeah. good, but it was a roller coaster of an experience. That's sort of what it's feeling like with Clay Holmes, and. Opening day, opening night, that game that Juan Soto had to throw out the guy yeah. at home plate. Like, he's getting himself into a bit of trouble, um, but he is on my team of the week. He did throw two innings, didn't give up a, a run, thanks to, thanks to Juan Soto out there, and he looked good. It is just seemingly going to be an experience for Yankees fans every time Clay Holmes comes into the game in that ninth inning. So, Clay Holmes rounds out my team of the week. That leaves Kiba Ruiz, Freddie Freeman, Cattell Marte, Oswaldo Cabrera, Mookie Betts, Lourdes Gurriel Jr., Michael Harris II, Luis Robert Jr., uh, Nick Martini as the DH, Bobby Miller, my starting pitcher, and Clay Holmes, my closer for team of the week. That's the first one. Feels yeah. good. Yeah. Feels good. It is great. Now it's time for our players of the week. Who is your player of of the week, Ben. It's Mookie. Hey, yeah, it's it is. Mookie. Look, yeah, it those is. numbers are those numbers are absurd. 556 average, three homers, an OPS of 2.381. And look, he's playing shortstop, which I think is fun. Mm -hmm. And I'm not he's there's some work to be done there. Look, Mookie, even Mookie Betts, it, it is hard to be a big league shortstop. Mookie Betts is a fantastic defender, gold glover in right field, moved to second base and was a good defender. And he's he's going through some bumps and bruises at shortstop at times. But the fact that he is even playing there is remarkable and speaks volumes to the player that, that Mookie Betts is. And put these numbers offensively is, is wild. Alex, go ahead. Who is your, uh, <laughs> who's, who's your player? I love this so much. You know why? Because <laughs> when we did our MVP predictions, I picked Mookie Betts as my NL MVP and I gave him some pretty strong numbers, right? That I thought he was going to finish the season with. And Ben over here laughed in my face, gave me an expression of I was crazy. And you know what? He is off to an incredible start to the season. My player of the week is also Mookie Betts. You know, he is I'm just going to give you a fun fact this is here, fair. right? Let me have it. Keep going. I know. I'm going to go. Okay. Keep going. His start, these first five games, it is so impressive. The last player who had an OPS over 2,000 with 10 RBI in the first five games of the regular season. Do you want to guess what player had that? 
Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds was the last player to have those kind of numbers that Mookie Betts put up in these first five games. And it is just so impressive. And I got to see one of the opening day home runs. I was actually doing a little creeper video getting <laughs> Otani and Mookie warming up before he was about to go up to the plate. Yeah. And they were both kind of taking their practice swings. Moments later, he hits a home run. Yeah. It was just, yeah, I, I am so happy. This is incredible. <laughs> this is going to be a fun year. It's also year. the first the first at bat for the Dodgers on, on Friday night when I was there. We were just yeah. sitting down was talking about all the players and the, and the Dodgers lineup. Mookie hit a homer immediately to lead off the game for the Dodgers. Uh, as you all know, we record during Sunday night baseball. So I was just going to look at the stats to see what he's doing. And currently over three tonight. So that means he's due for, for something cool. Uh, this was all deserved. This I, be- is great. I believe the words I used when he, I think you said he's going to hit like three thirty six on the year with 40, mm-hmm. Something like that. I believe the term I used was if Mookie Betts hits 336, the average was the big one for me. He could hit 40 homers. If Mookie Betts hits 336 with 40, I will eat my foot. I think is what I said. (laughs) I'm a bit worried about that. It looks like we're heading that way. (laughs) I'm a bit worried there. Uh, I love that so So much. So that does it for our uh, team of the week, the first of of the the year. We are so back. Hey, and it feels so good. Baseball is back pretty much every single day now yeah. from here and t- through October. And it just feels great. Alex, this is a lot of fun. Always. This is a lot of fun. We're back, baby. We're back, We're back. baby. Hope you all enjoyed this. Make sure you're subscribed wherever you listen to your podcast. Hit that subscribe or follow button. Uh, Apple, Spotify. You can watch everything we do on Spotify as well and on YouTube. Flipping Bats Pod there. And on social media. Follow us on TikTok. We put some really cool stuff there. um, And we're hoping for 100,000 followers. And we're getting closer and closer. So go follow us on TikTok. But that does it for this one. Opening week end is in the books. And now we are rocking and rolling. Thank you all for listening. Remember, until next time, my friends, find your bat and flip it.